church didn't function without it. Do we have any more announcements? Yes, I would like to thank the Raspberry family and everybody surrounding what y'all have done for me. Y'all have prayed for me. Y'all have visits, telephone calls, and gifts. So just keep on praying for me. The last test that I had done, the doctor said everything looked good, but we never know what's going to be next. So I'm just going to keep on pushing. <laughs> Amen. Amen. Keep that faith. And also an uh, announcement uh, in, the event, in the Miss Evangelical Conference, uh, there have been some changes that's, that's taking place. And in fact, of uh, January the 1st, uh, the district names are changed. They haven't come up with no official district name as of yet, but right now, uh, our church is in what's called District 1. So we, there's no more Greenwood District. The, it'll be a part of District 1, which consists of part of old Greenwood District and all of the Senatorial uh, District. We still have the same district superintendent, Reverend uh, Vicki Haynes. So, um, so, so they've been working towards coming up with an official district names. So right now, we're down to seven districts in the Mississippi Andrew Conference from the uh, 11th that we had at this one point. And uh, just continue to uh, pray for us as we go through this transition, and they'll be making you know additional changes uh, as we as we go along. So to continue to pray for our denomination, our Andrew Conference as we continue to deal with uh, changes, some out of stemming from a lot of churches that have disaffiliated from the United Methodist Church. Uh, denomination, but we moving forward, and God guide us, and we're gonna be stronger and better with the help of the Holy Spirit. Uh, so just like again, just keep praying for it. They're gonna, and as I get more information, I'll make sure that you will get that uh, as well. That's all I have for now. Uh, at this time, would you stand for our affirmation of faith? Uh, find in your books our uh, affirmation for 20, uh, 24. As we close out 2023 and step into the new year of 2024, as a church, we want to take a moment to thank God for his goodness and kindness to us. God is good. He is faithful. Even in the midst of difficult circumstances, God is good. If our year was the best year ever, God is good. If our year hasn't been great, guess what? God is good. Whatever our experience in 2023, good or bad, we know that God has great plans for Raspberry. God is for us, and we will do new things in and throughout the life of the church in 2024. This we declare and claim in the name of the Trinity. Amen. Amen. This time we remain standing. Uh, for we come this far by faith, that's in the song of Zion 192.
he baptized you with water, but he was baptized you with the Holy Spirit. It came to pass in those days that Jesus came from Nazareth of Galilee and was baptized by John in the Jordan. And immediately coming up from the water, he saw the heavens parting and the Spirit descended upon him like a dove. Then a voice came from the heaven, You are my beloved Son, in whom I am well pleased. This is the word of God for the people. Thanks Thanks be God. God. Let us pray. Most holy and loving God, we come to you at this present hour. First of all, just to say thank you. We thank you, Lord, because you allowed us to go through 2023. Even through all the ups and downs, you kept us here. You allowed us to come and witness the first Sunday of 2024. We thank you. Because many people did not make it to 2024. There are those who are with us, January 1st, 2024, are no longer with us. We just thank you because we're still here. We are thankful because you allowed us to worship together one more time. We thank you for those who are worshiping with us virtually. We thank you for those who are praying with us, praying for us. We thank you, Lord, for those who think about us. We just thank you, Lord, because you've just been so good to us. Even when we don't deserve it, continue to shower your blessings on us. We cannot thank you enough. Father, we thank you for sending your darling son Jesus to go on the cross for us for the forgiveness of our sins and to give us an opportunity for salvation based on our faith. We thank you for the Holy Spirit that not only dwell with us, but dwell within us as you continue your work of transforming us in your image. We just thank you because we praise you. We can praise you. Those, there are many who want to praise you, can't praise you today, but we are able to praise you. Forgive us of all of our sins. Created us clean hearts and renew a right spirit within us. Continue your work of transforming us in your image. Continue to teach us what it means to love you more. Teach us what it means to love humanity more. Lead us and guide us as we, as we go out and be the hands, feet, and mouth of Jesus. Show us the way. Teach us, lead us, guide us. Tell us what to say. Tell us what to do. Tell us how to say it. Tell us when to speak. Tell us when not to speak. Tell us what to say to all that they will draw them to you. Help us to be a light in this dark world. Do a new thing with us. Do 
ask, Lord, that you would go into the vineyard and touch your people right now. There are those who don't know you, Lord. The part of this is touch them right now. Those that in our local communities are those that are joining in virtually of those wherever, Lord. Touch, Lord, that somebody somewhere this day will surrender their lives to you and accept you as Lord and Savior and follow you. Lord, we tell those who are hurting right now. Touch them right now. There are those who are sick right now. Touch them right now. There are those who are broken, who, are, who don't know which way to go. Touch them right now. There are those who don't know what it is to experience love. Show your love to them right now. There are those who struggle with various addictions. Deliver them right now, Lord. There are those who need physical healing, emotional healing, spiritual healing. Do it right now, Lord. Lord, whatever you're doing in this season, don't do it without us. We need you right now. Lord, help us to be a Holy Spirit filled church that others will, will want to know what must we do to be saved. What can we get what you have? How can we get it? Lord, we ask that you would just go into our communities, transform lives, transform communities, Lord. That will reflect your kingdom. Lord, we ask that you will touch our elected officials. Give them your vision. Point them in the right direction. Give them your heart, your eyes, your ears, and your voice. That they will be committed to make a difference, especially for the poor people, the marginalized people, those who've been left behind. Come into this place right now. As I get ready to proclaim your message to your people, anoint me from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet, anoint my voice, anoint my tongue. Let me speak with clarity. Let me speak your word. Let my words be transformative for your people. That the hearts of your people will turn to you, Lord. Because it's all about you. We want to please you. We want to serve you. And we want to serve humanity. And let the words of my mouth and the meditation of my heart be acceptable in your sight. Oh Lord, my strength and my redeem. Let the church say amen, amen, and amen.
today is a good day. This is the day that the Lord has made. We will rejoice and be glad in it. I was glad when they said unto me, let us go into the house of the Lord. God has truly been good. Give God a hand clap of praise on today. And looking at our message on today, I will be focusing on the scripture that was read from Mark, the first chapter, verses 4 through 11. And I will use as a theme on today, the Holy Spirit baptism. The Holy Spirit baptism. Today is the first Sunday after the Epiphany. The name Epiphany comes from the Greek word Epiphania, which means appearance or manifestation. And it referred to the manifestation of Jesus Christ to the world. Epiphany is the day that Christians remember when the wise men came to visit Jesus when they brought their gold, frankincense, and myrrh. The arrival of these wise men was a sign that the incarnation of God and Christ had been made known and was recognized by the heavens to the whole world. But even the Gentile wise men from the east came to worship Jesus. This is a time where we are focused more on today on the baptism of Jesus Christ. And we will focus on that as well as the baptism of the Holy Spirit. The Gospel of Mark was intended for the Gentile audience, especially the Roman people. Mark, the book of Mark is the Gospel of Action because as you, if you read through the book of Mark, you will frequently see the word immediately and then, which keeps Mark's narrative moving rapidly along. You see, Jesus appeared in Mark, in the book of Mark, as the servant who burst on the scene to suffer for the sins of the world. Mark's fast-paced approach in his writing would especially appeal to the action-oriented, practical Roman people. Without coming on Christ's birth and childhood, Mark begins his record uh, of the life of Jesus with the description of John the Baptist, who was the one that was prophesied to be the forerunner for the Messiah. The brief public ministry of John the Baptist paved the way for the introduction and inauguration of Jesus Christ. And looking at our text, Mark recorded that John the Baptist appeared in the wilderness. John's message was that the people should repent, which means change their minds and forsake their sins in order to receive the forgiveness or remission of their sin. When his hearers did repent, John the Baptist baptized them as an outward expression of their repentance. Baptism separated them publicly from the mass of the nation of Israel who had forsaken God. There may have been an initial burst of enthusiasm with many people rushing out to the desert to hear this fiery preaching. But majority of the people did not genuinely confess and forsake their sin. John's message also was the superiority of Jesus. John said that Jesus was greater in power, greater in personal excellence, greater in ministry. John even said he did not consider himself worthy to untie the sound of the strap of Jesus. Spirit-filled 
preachings always exalt Jesus and they humble themselves. And that's what John the Baptist did. John the Baptist let everybody know I ain't the one you need to be worshiping. I'm just paving the way for the one who you need to worship. And Mark 1 and 8, John said, I am baptized with water, but he will baptize you with the Holy Spirit. John, I mean, John the Baptist understood, yeah, I might baptize you with water, but water, baptism, does not change. It's the baptism of the Holy Spirit that changes us. John understood that this baptism will produce a great release of spiritual power in the lives of believers such as you and I. And it also incorporates all of us believers into the body of Christ. Now at this point, Jesus was ready to embark on his public ministry. Jesus traveled over 60 miles from Nazareth to the Jordan River near Jericho. There Jesus was baptized by John. Now in Jesus' case, of course, there was no repentance because there were no sins for Jesus to confess. But however, baptism for Jesus was a symbolic action picturing his eventual baptism into death on Calvary and his rising from the dead. When you look at baptism, especially when you look at the immersion mode of baptism, it, 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 it symbolizes the death. When you go down the water, that's the death of Jesus and the death of ourselves to the whole self. When we come out of the water, it signifies the resurrection of Jesus and also us resurrecting to a new life in Christ. Thus, at the very outset, of Jesus' public ministries, there was this vivid foreshadow of a cross and an empty tomb. Now let us focus on Jesus baptizing us with the Holy Spirit. There are two points that we will touch on today. Number one, the Holy Spirit will empower us to be transformed continuously into the image of Christ. Again, the Holy Spirit will empower us to be transformed continuously into the image of Christ. Romans 12 and 2 said, do not be conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind so that you may discern what is the will of God, what is good, acceptable and perfect. My brothers and sisters, the Holy Spirit will empower us to uh, refrain from conforming to the ways and thinking of the world. We will grow in our love for God and in our love for humanity. We will grow in our commitment to demonstrate God's love and justice, mercy and kindness in the world. We will be the embodiment of God's hope in the world. God's plan is that we, the church, are to be the primary evidence of the presence of God. People will see God through us everywhere we go if we are led by the Holy Spirit. We cannot draw people to Christ if we do not commit to being the embodiment of Christ in the world. In other words, we cannot lead people to Christ or point them to Christ if they don't see Christ in us. God is calling us to commit to partner with him in dismantling all forms of racism and oppression 
all over the place. We are called to transform lives and transform communities. God is calling us to partner with him in pursuing justice for the poor and oppressed people. Now, we should not fool ourselves into thinking that it's enough to feel drawn to the heart of God without our lives demonstrating the harm of God. In other words, we cannot fool ourselves thinking that we are drawn closer to God if people don't see God in us. Point number two, the Holy Spirit will lead us to making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of the world. Again, the Holy Spirit will lead us to making disciples of Jesus Christ for the transformation of this world. Matthew 28, chapter 19 and 20 verse says, Go therefore and make disciples of all nations, baptizing them in the name of the Father, in the name of the Son, in the name of the Holy Spirit, and teaching them to obey everything I commanded you. And Jesus said, and remember, I am with you always, even to the end of the world. Here, God has commissioned us to go and make disciples without prejudice. And, which, and what am I saying without prejudice? That means we should not pick and choose where to go and make disciples. We should be led by the Holy Spirit to go where Jesus want us to go. We should be led to say what Jesus want us to say. Because if you love God, you're supposed to love humanity. You're supposed to love everybody. Everybody that's lost need to know about Jesus. And it's on us to teach them, to show them, to point them to Jesus. The church is not called to be an elite club. We are called to be the embodiment of Jesus Christ in our local community and beyond. A lot of churches want certain groups of people to be a part of their church. I'm here to let you know God created everybody in his image. Nobody is better than the next person. I don't care what education you got. I don't care how much money you got. The, the, the criteria for being a part of the body of Christ is not your education. It's not your money. It's not your name. It's not your social class. You give Jesus your heart. Too many churches have separated. Want, you, want, you want to just only deal with certain groups of people. People that like minded. I'm here to let you know Jesus did not go to like minded people. Jesus chose his disciples out there in the streets. And why we don't want to go out and draw others to Christ. John Wesley, the founder of the Methodist movement, believed that the world is our parish. In other words, Raspberry, this is not our parish. What's outside these four walls, that's our parish. That means the work is not inside of here. The work is what we do outside there. We should focus on evangelizing where God leads us, including in our worship, should be our focus on the marginalized, the uneducated, and those in poverty. We need to allow the Holy Spirit to lead us to be the church that God will have us to be. A church that's committed to draw people to Christ from diverse backgrounds. We should seek 
God to buy and God and, and, and doing what we can to attract people to Christ. We should, be, we should not be so religious where people are not so comfortable with us. God is calling us to be radical disciples, not religious fanatics. <laughs> we should be focused on meeting people where they are. In other words, uh, we, we got to uh, take Jesus to the streets. Yeah. We got to understand that the people that are not coming to church, that means we got to take the church to them. <laughs> the church is called to be the source of resurrection of their lives and the community. Many people are spiritually dead, but we can be a catalyst of the spiritual baptism, which will lead them to accept Jesus Christ as their Lord and Savior, leading them to a new life in Christ. My brothers and sisters, we got to understand that uh, the Holy Spirit will empower us to be radical disciples of Jesus Christ, committed to transforming lives and communities. We do not exist just to be a member of the church. We exist to be the hands, feet, and mouth of Jesus. It's time for us to wake up as the body of Christ and commit to walking in our calling leading to transformative changes all around us. The ultimate outwork of the Holy Spirit power is love. This love is a different kind of power, relational power, the faithful present witness. God is, 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 is paving the way for us to go where he wants us to go. He set the state, set the scene for wherever he leads us. He'll be glorified through us. We got to take the message of Jesus Christ everywhere. Whether it's to the park, the restaurant, buying grill, malls, grocery stores, schools, neighborhoods, people's homes, wherever God leads us. The Holy Spirit will lead us to encourage people to become whole and to be renewed in the image of God. The Holy Spirit will help us to understand the power of our testimony and how we can encourage others. The Holy Spirit will help us to understand that God will accept us and all people, no matter our situation. Amen. Let us seek to be baptized with the Holy Spirit. My brothers and sisters, it's in the year 2024, God has called us to be a church that's filled with the Holy Spirit, that, 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 that our light will shine. As, uh, as, as Jesus said, we got to let our light shine before men, that they may see our good works and glorify God who is in heaven. Jesus is, is, is calling on us to go out and be this big light, this bright light, because somebody are watching us Somebody are looking at us. Somebody need us. Somebody want to see Jesus. And I'm here to let you know it's time for us to tap into the Holy Spirit in our personal lives. Tap into the Holy Spirit in the life of the church. Tap in the Holy Spirit in what we're doing in the community. Because this world is falling apart. But that don't mean that we have to sit back and do nothing. God is calling us to be filled with the Holy Spirit and live in a way where people will ask us, what must I do to be saved? Sometimes we just got to get down on our knees and say, Lord, here I am. Fill me with the Holy Spirit. Empower me to be who you want me to be. Show me where you need me to go. Help me to be who you want me to be. 
Lord, just, just fill me from the head of from the crown of my head to the sole of my feet. I'm here to let you know if you want to see a change in your life, you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. If you want to see a change in this church, you got to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we cannot be who we need to be without the power of the Holy Spirit. We are not to be a dead people. We are to be a live people. Because God has been so good to us. 2024 is a time for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. And I'm here to let you know this year uh, is all about the power of the Holy Spirit. Because without the Holy Spirit, we are not. Somebody is lost today. Somebody is suffering today. Somebody is grieving today. Somebody is confused today. We need to pray for them that the Holy Spirit will give them peace in their situation. Pray that the Holy Spirit will deliver them out of their situation. Pray for the Holy Spirit that they will be healed from their situation. Pray that the Holy Spirit will open up their eyes, their heart, that they will see what God has for them. It's time to tap into the Holy Spirit. It's time for us to be filled with the Holy Spirit. Because we were created in his image and the Holy Spirit is there to fill us with God's Holy Ghost power. Mm -hmm. amen, 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 amen. Amen. The doors of the church is open. Is there anyone here that, that don't know Jesus in the part of their sins? Today is a good day. Is there anyone here that's ready to reaffirm your faith? Recommit your life to Jesus. Today is a good day. Is there anyone here that's ready to, be, ready to tap into the power of the Holy Spirit through Jesus Christ? Today is a good day. I'm here to let you know the doors of the church is open. I extend to you in the invitation to Christian discipleship. We serve a man who went, to, went on the cross for us, who died for us, in order for us to be forgiven. When you give your life to Jesus, You are free. You are liberated. The shackles that's, that, that's got you in bondage will be broken. Because Jesus sent the power of the Holy Spirit to break all, all shackles. So whatever got you in bondage, the Holy Spirit will dismount it. Whatever you may be struggling with, Give it to Jesus. You may feel like that, that, you, that you're not worthy. I'm mean, to let you know none of us are worthy. That's why Jesus went to the cross for all of us. He loves you. Jesus is not looking for you to be so self-righteous and religious. Jesus is not looking for you to be so perfect. Jesus, all Jesus wants is a relationship with you. And Jesus, through his relationship with you, but through the Holy Spirit will shape and mold you to become more like him. All you have to do is surrender. Don't let nobody tell you you can wait. Because tomorrow, it's not promised. Later on, it's not promised. 
as a matter of fact, the next moment is not promised. So while you have an opportunity, give Jesus your life. And you will have peace that transcends all understanding. You will experience healing. You will experience deliverance. You will experience restoration. But more important, you will experience his love. The world may turn their back on you, but Jesus told them to be going to remind us that he'll never leave us nor forsake. People may hate you, but Jesus said they hate me, but I love you. I gave up everything for you. All you have to do is just give Jesus your life and believe that he died, believe that he rose from the dead, and guess what? You're saved. And just that self with everyone. Christ our Lord invites to his table all who love him, who earnestly repent of their sins, and seek to live in peace with one another. Therefore, let us confess our sins before God and one another. Together. Jesus Christ, 
by the baptism of his self sovereign death and resurrection, you gave birth to your church and delivered us from slavery to sin and death and made with us a new covenant by water and spirit. On the night that he gave himself up for us, he took bread, gave thanks to you, broke the bread, gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. When the supper was over, he took the cup, gave thanks to you, gave it to his disciples and said, Drink from this, all of you. This is the blood of the new covenant poured out for you and for me for the forgiveness of sin. Do this as often as you drink in remembrance of me. And so, in remembrance of these, your mighty acts in Jesus Christ, we offer ourselves in praise and thanksgiving as a holy and living sacrifice in union with Christ offered for us as we proclaim the mystery of faith. Pour out your Holy Spirit on us gathered here, and on these gifts of bread and wine. Make them be for us the body and blood of Christ, that we may be for the world the body of Christ, redeemed by his blood. By your spirit, make us one with Christ, one with each other, and one in ministry to all the world, until Christ comes in final victory, and we feast at his heavenly banquet. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, with the Holy Spirit of your Holy Church, all honor and glory, all honor and glory is yours, Almighty Father, now and forever. And now with the confidence of the children of God, let us recite the prayer that Jesus taught his disciples. Our
word you have created the gift of life and forgive yourself to us in Jesus Christ, whose holy life, suffering, and death, and glorious resurrection have delivered us from the slavery to sin and death. We thank you that in the power of your Holy Spirit, you have made us in this sacrament, united us with Christ, and given us a foretaste of your heavenly banquet. We are your children, and yours is the glory now and forever. Through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. You're making all right? Doing good, you. Good, 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 good,